welcome in. It's John Radigan with the great Nate Newton, who's not so great today. And uh, <laughs> we missed a chance for him to gloat big time last week because uh, it was sooner to when his Celtics had beaten the Mavericks. But, uh, yeah, we're going to tap the brakes on great today, Nate, and just right. say uh, begrudgingly congratulations. Because uh, you've been a fan of the Celtics forever. You stuck Ever by since your I fandom. was about 14 years old, my friend. Yeah, I'm you 62. stuck by your fandom. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. we forgot to do one thing. What's that? Nate is going to what, – hey, what's this show called, Nate? <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. And the <laughs> thing about it, when you, when you talk about them Celtics, uh, them Cowboys, uh, you know, I used to be a Atlanta Brave fan, but I could not tell you not a player on that team. I ain't been there since Glavin and Smoltz and all those great guys. That was a good group, yeah. yeah. But uh, I tell you like this here, uh, Rad, we just going to get into it, man. We just going to talk, man. Uh, we missed a few weeks. Uh, we've had some personal things jump off, and we, we you know, we're not gonna get into that right there with the families and stuff like that because you guys don't, you know, want to really you know, hear about that. But uh, some sports things is happening. Me and Rad just gonna have a conversation today. We're not gonna yeah. be trying to stay in order, but we're gonna have a conversation. Uh, and if Spencer want to get in, uh, our producer, if he want to get in because he thinks it's a sad thing that uh, that the Celtics won, I think it's a sad thing. For the uh, Mavericks to have a 16 and four record at the end of the season, to be ranked in so many categories, only to fall prey to a well-rounded Celtics team. Yeah, I, I can't say that's sad to me, Nate. I got to be honest with you. I think the run they made through the Western Conference was spectacular. It was, uh, and and it and it it. Uh, followed that 16 and four but I, I heard a lot of people throughout the year say there are no great teams in the N or the NBA this year right there's none yes. of those great teams to yes. which I always said at the time I said why aren't people noticing the Celtics and I'll tell you why they're not because of one of the words in that statement and one of the words you've said team yes. right people yeah. don't want to they think they want to focus on a team they say there's no great teams you say well who were the great teams well the you know the warriors were great because of steph curry yeah. well you know the the uh you know hit miami heat were great because of lebron james and Dwayne yeah. wade right they want they say team they want superstars and what don't the celtics have they yeah have they, superstars they don't i mean and, and i'm not trying to be funny because I, I, I'm going to see all the way, man. I mean, I, I, I've i been there, man, with the great Dave Cowens, man, Cedric Maxwell, the Birds, man, uh, Bob Cousy. I've been there with the, with the greats. Uh, the, you know, the, the halls just filled with these guys. But the thing that the Celtics has always preached and read our back, is I got that right? Yeah. Is, is it read yeah. our back? It's red. Yeah, Since red our back. Preach team first. Right. And uh, so every player has sacrificed a part of them. Uh, they've given up a part of themselves as being a superstar. So that they their team can prosper. Yeah. Uh, Jason Tatum. By his regular season standards were way below what we thought he would be in the playoffs. But you see this kid giving this ball to Brown over and over, letting Brown close out games, letting other guys close out games, just being a complete team player. And to the point where uh, Brown won the MVP. And so when you, when you look at that, that, that concept, this is not something new for the Celtics playing as a team. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I wanted Brown out of there. I yeah. did not want him getting $250 million plus dollars against the cap, and I was totally wrong. And thanks to their GM, who used to be their coach, mm -hmm. said, you know what? These guys get along. I mean, they, they tried to tell us every time we would try to separate Brown and the other kid, they would tell us we get along. We are okay. We just got to get better and we got to grow. And when they got and got, went out and got poor Seagans and what's my other guard? Uh, we, we Drew are, Holiday. Drew Holiday. When they went out and got these guys in white, that was their yeah, core white. guy. Ooh, yeah. Man. And so white these guys. great series. Yeah. So they found five or six guys with Al Harford 
five or six guys that could play and knew their roles and cherished their roles. And so that that is why. And 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 I'm the first, and I and I'm 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 a realist. Thank you, East, for being injured. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. these guys never had to go past six games. No. So didn't have, yeah. They didn't have to hustle. They didn't have to sweat. So when they got to the the finals, the Mavericks went through a gauntlet, starting with the Clippers. They went through a gauntlet. And they were pushed. They were pushed. They and, and, and to the point where uh, we're going to get into y'all what we call the God of Dallas. Y'all Luka Doncic. <laughs> <laughs> that is what hurt Luka. Was he ran into a fresh team. Team. He ran into a fresh team of guys that could handle the ball and that could put him in the mixer. And what people say, yeah. what is the mixer? Put him in the grinder, in the pick and roll. For once in Luca's Luca life, he found out what it was to be to be at the target. They let Luca. Yep. Uh, say what? Let me back up. I know we said we was gonna have a conversation. And I'm gonna wind up doing all the talking. But let me say this right here. With the Clippers, we knew. Okay, if they can get past the Clippers, they will be. It was a thunder next, and I'm correct. Yes. Yep. We we kind of say, uh, uh-uh, uh, these young boys gonna run, gonna run the legs from under Luca. Them, Luca's beat up, out of shape. They are gonna run the legs out of Luca. But Kyrie showed up. Uh, the other guys showed up. The 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 big centers showed up with the lob, and every team focused on Luca. You fell into the trap. Luke is one of the best passers in the league. So he was hitting everybody. He was letting Kyrie handle a lot of the up-tempo stuff. And he was, in and at times of the game, Luka would take over with his passing, with his shooting. But nobody went at Luka defensively. Nobody put him in the blender and in the grinder. And he got through that Thunder game a relatively unscathed. Now he fell a couple of times. He got hurt a couple of times, but they just didn't have the experience. They got the talent. The Thunder mm-hmm. has the talent. They mm-hmm. just didn't have the experience and the playoffs experience that Luca and Kyrie and uh, had to take their team over the top. And then they ran into the Timberwolves. Great player in that, which uh, uh, great uh, role players that they have. But they still didn't have enough experience. They went at Luca uh, uh, defensively when he was on offense. They they doubled him and fell into the same thing that the Thunder fell into. And that you you took away your defensive end, to, your defensive end to compensate, and it hurts you offensively because once Luca gets in a groove and he gets the alley hooping and giving that ball up and hitting his three pointers and stepping back, you 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 done fell into you done fell into the web because they don't want you to concentrate on defense. They want you to concentrate on offense or trying to score with Luca them so they can control tempo. They did it with the Thunder. They did it with the Clippers, and they did it with the Timberwolves. But what they couldn't do with the Celtics is they couldn't control tempo. And the Celtics said, we're not going to sacrifice our defense. We're not going to double Luka. We're going to single Luka. We're going to make Kyrie beat us. So this fell on Kyrie to beat us. Kyrie couldn't beat us because Drew Holiday, every time Kyrie would come down and have a spectacular shot, Drew Holiday, a white, would dribble down slowly, put him in the blender, and post him up. Kyrie has never been that guy can handle any post up. He's a small two. So he had to play on both ends. Luca had to play on both ends. They don't have a third guy. Like we have Drew Holiday. We have Tatum. We have Brown. Then we have Drew Holiday slash White. Guys that can take the ball and do what they need to do to create or either pass. Who is that third guy for the Mavericks? 
Their and issue, then they have them in the Celtic series. Yes. So their issue is going to be simple to this right here. Who is that guy they can get coming back to this year? A lot of people want to say that the Mavericks are ahead of schedule. Let me share something with y'all. I like when I hear, oh, they are ahead of schedule. Oh, they got everything they need. No, they don't. No, they don't. Remember now, is Luca going to play in the Olympics? That's not a plus. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's not a plus. No, I agree. When are you going to heal your body? When right. are you going to get in shape and get ready for the NBA? Huh? So well, now that I think, <laughs> I think actually there's, there's two, but your two questions, I think counteract each other there. I like the idea of a guy playing in the Olympics if it's to get in shape or stay in shape, as it were. But I feel like Luca was hobbled at the end of the of the playoffs. He needs some downtime, right? Now, yes. here's the thing. If he takes that downtime, and look, you were 25, I was 25, the man's 25 years old. You give in to the temptations of food and drink and fun at that age more easily, and you think, oh, I'll burn it off, you know? And uh, – so we've seen Luca come back, having had a heck of a good time in the off season, you know. Um, if he plays in the Olympics, I feel like he'll probably come back in in better shape. But will his knees work? Will his back work? You know, those were the things that were hurting him last year. And see, I like I, I like how you came at that red. I like how you interjected and you came into the camera and you was moving. I, I liked it all of that. I'm fired up. But I t- I tell people I was 25. Never been the athlete or the ball player that Luca was. Never. So that I'm not saying I'm Luca. Never was, never will be, never can be. But at a certain point in time, and I don't care how young you are, the overweight injuries will come into your life. Never being in shape, hurting your knees. Never being in shape, hurting your back. Then if you wait too long, if you have too many consecutive years of that, now it becomes a chronic issue. Luca needs to decide, like the kid up in Denver did, uh, Jokovic, you know what? I better get in shape. If I'm going to be all I can be, I better get in shape. And don't wait and hope five years from now, hey, man, you know, I really want to, I, I really want to do this now. And then you lose uh, 15, 25 pounds, but your body won't respond. Uh, th- that is the big thing with Zion in New Orleans. Luca yeah. is more of a head up from the neck up player, whereas this kid is all about explosives. Yeah. You know, too many fat boy injuries will get you in the end. And yeah. so I'm hoping that, Mal- that Luca will mature and the people around him will be a little bit more pushy in the right direction because I, I, I've heard too many times, we, we're right there. We, we, we are right there, and you never get back. Yeah. Ask that, yeah, here, uh, <laughs> here's the breakdown. Here's yeah. the breakdown to what you said, though. Okay, so I get it. Uh, you know, that Luca has come back looking not in shape. But putting him in the same category or trying to with Zion – isn't even close because Zion no. misses 30, 40 games a year. Oh, no, 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 no. The more. only thing they yeah. have in common is that is to get the big boy injuries. And I yeah, say, but see, I don't, I, I don't know that. I don't know that Luca's injuries are big boy injuries. Right. I mean, first of all, he's not injured that much. No, no, no. He doesn't and, miss and that's that what I'm saying. Time. The difference is, and stay with me here. When you're as big as Zion, and everything is about explosion, he tears up something. When right. you're almost 300 pounds as a basketball player, at six foot eight or six foot nine, you are a big, big man. And so sure. when he goes up and tears a ham, it's four months. When he goes mm-hmm. up and twists the knee, it's four months. Whereas Luca may be five or 10 pounds overweight, but he plays under control and he's methodical. So when his big boy injuries get him, they don't twist and tear up stuff. That is what I'm saying. But in the long run, Luca should last longer, 
But in the long run, those fat boy injuries will get you. Take it from a fat man. Well, let me let me say this too. We know you were overweight, especially in, in the early days of your career, till Jimmy got a hold of you. Yeah, um, until, until but, Charles Haley got a hold of me. Charles Haley, and and I want to get back to Jokic on that too. But I don't remember you being injured a lot. Did you get big boy injuries? I would get the fat boy injuries, but I was so big and so powerful, and I didn't have, see. Even though we we punch off the ball, run off the ball. Do quick jerky things. You know, we don't do the basketball things. Yeah. That is that is unreal, yeah. bro. To be running down a court yeah. and all of a sudden you flying through the air. Yeah. You're running and, down and, the court and all of a sudden then, you're trying to block somebody. And then that, landing. Right. Yeah, flying then, is one thing. Yeah, man. When landing, you hit that hardwood floor. Yeah. It ain't you yeah. know. So, yeah. so, uh, so you're Charles Haley though. You're Charles Haley. Now I get that that they're right. not on the same team, but but Luca's best buddy is Jokic, right? I mean, they are best buddies. So I would have to think that man will have an influence. You were talking about how he kind of changed his ways, and he did. He had that classic dad bod, you know? Yeah. Like, here's a here's a 28-year-old man. He looks like a dad, you know? Yeah, and yes. all of a sudden, man, he all of a sudden he comes back, he looks like an Adonis, and, and he can still move. He can still throw those great passes from the post. I mean, he's unbelievable. So, um I think maybe Luca will get, you know, will get some inspiration out of him at some point too. See, because the thing is, I, I, I like to see guys at their best and at their peak, and that's that's all I want from Luca and the fans for Dallas. I want it, I want him at his peak. I don't want him on the downside. So all of a sudden, wow, he got one. You know, and now everybody, well, he, you know, he could have got. Nah, that could have got don't never work, bro, because it never will be and it never was. So I, 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 nothing like the present. It's nothing like the present. The NBA have shown you the last seven, eight years. You can be in the finals and not see it for 20 years. You can be in the final. And now all of a sudden you're in the finals. You in the you in your conference finals, but you you lose in the first round. Next year you're back in the conference finals, and you lose in the third round, and, you, and it take three or four years to get back, if you get back at all. And that is the what I, that is what I'm praying because Lucas because Luca done it with him and just uh, Kyrie, they done it in a great coaching job by by your head coach. Of, of the defense. They played some defense, man. Yeah. And they did a great job, but ain't nothing soft about 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 y'all conference. Ain't nothing soft about that conference no. over there. No. You got I the know. boys up north. Them dudes getting better. These dudes getting experience. You got to yeah. Timberwolves and yeah. Denver is hot. Yeah. No. You can't tell There's Denver they weren't supposed to be uh back to back. So right. I'm just no, saying, there's, it, it ain't going to be as easy as folks think I, now. I, I get you. There's some great teams. But you know that your Celtics were starting to really frustrate their fans because they were getting to the conference championship every year yes. or even that final and losing. Yes. And it's like, man, we ain't won in 16 years. This isn't like the Celtics, you know. Right. So um, you have. I believe there's always that hump, right, that you have to get over. Now, I'm with you. I don't know that the Mavericks, as they're currently constructed, have enough to make a run like this again. But I do believe that as long as you have one of the three best players in the league, which Luka definitely is, then you have an opportunity. And then I believe the young man, Nico Harrison, who came from a shoe store, you know, Nike, I believe he's done a great job. Uh, you know, when he, when you talk about that defense, he brought in Gafford, he brought in PJ Washington, yes. he brought in Jones. I mean, those guys played some D. And if they can continue to relish in their roles, I, 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 this is the thing about winning. What comes with winning is egos. Mm-hmm. So can Jason Kidd sell his kids, uh, his uh, his young playoff-bound team, can he sell his kids of uh, 
Do what you did last year and give me 10% more. Mm -hmm. Do what you did last year and give me 10%. If you could just give me 10% more, then we can be back where we were challenging again. But if you give me the same of what you gave me last year, it won't work. Mm -hmm. It won't work. It's always got to be a 10 plus, a 15 yeah. plus. And, and, and that's what people don't understand because now – all of a sudden, when Denver see you during the regular season, they coming at you. When the oh, Timberwolves yeah. see you in the regular season, they coming at you. And then when the playoffs get there, maybe you don't have the mental psyche where you're like, okay, we beat them last year in the playoffs. You may not be hyped. You may be going out to say it's just another playoff game. Denver ain't feeling that. The Timberwolves ain't feeling that. They trying to, they trying to get you. They're trying mm -hmm. to get you, especially the Timberwolves. You could not tell me that Edwards and his group didn't think they had Luka them. You could not, especially when Luka them just took, oh. took the games, just took the game from them. Yeah. Dominated them. Yeah. Come on, no. man. Hey, it, hey. And one thing Edwards isn't lacking is confidence. Right. Remember when they beat? Remember when they beat the Nuggets on national TV? He said, "Oh man, I can't wait! I got Kyrie! I got yeah. Kyrie! Yeah. Kyrie had something for him, didn't he? We put him in, in a blunder. He did. Put him in the blunder, man. And so, yeah, I tell people like this: players with confidence. I don't like to use the word pride, but players with confidence, especially that can play up above the shoulders, are special players. And that, yeah. and that and and that's why I tell people, that's why I think Luca can play a long time. Now, I, competitiveness and it's a different thing for me. Everybody like Luca's so competitive. Oh, he ain't coming out the game. Well, I was competitive too, and if I got in the game, I didn't want to come out. But is that competitiveness going to drive him during the off season? to stay in shape. See, because you can, you can say whatever you want. You can say whatever, the injuries, this, this, playing in too many games, playing in not enough games. Luca was out of shape, bro. He was not in basketball shape. It's three guys that is always being questioned about their shape. Okay. One plays Philadelphia. And the other one plays for New Orleans. Yeah, I don't have to call their name. Nope. They nope. All, and, then, and you're putting Luca in that category. And, yeah, because Luca, if Luca can ever, what what I tell people, people say, well, the injuries. Why is he having a lot of injuries, or why? And his injuries don't take him out of games. It's just little nagging injuries. You know. Okay. He reminds me of LeBron in this category. And he reminds me of Michael Jordan in this category. He's going to get fouled over and over and over and over. There are going to be some games where there are vicious fouls. Now, tell me how did Michael Jordan combat it and tell me how did LeBron combated, and it's gonna come down to one thing: make taking your, make care, shots. taking care of your body, mm. taking. Yeah. Michael Jordan said, "When I go, when I, even if I make it to a finals, I won't be any good because I have to go through the Celtics and I have to go through the Pistons." He went out and got him a personal trainer. He's like, I have to be in excellent shape if I'm going to go through this grinder. After what you call it, first two years in the league with Cleveland, he's like, you know what? I'm not going to make it because of the type of game I play. I'm going to have to put a lot more money and resources into my body. Now, if you want to say Luke is a top three, top five player, I would not argue that. But what keep hap what what is Luca's problem? His body. Well, you could, you his, could say his problem is he just doesn't have enough help. Uh, no, Michael Jordan didn't have enough help at first either. 
LeBron didn't have enough help at first either. But you can't keep running away from the problem. Let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> Please understand me. I'm not a Luka fan, but I am a, a, a fan of greatness. And I think Luka can be great. Number one, first and foremost, please listen. If he takes care of his body, that's good for one, one or two finals right there. If he just takes care of his body, you don't want to be one of those guys or girls three years from now saying, if Luca would have just took care of his body. No, Luca, take care of your body. It is what makes you the trillions of dollars that you make. Don't listen to Rad. Don't listen to those <laughs> other guys who are trying to find other excuses. Take care of your body. You are the Mavericks. Without you, there are no Mavericks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now who's staring up at the camera? I like that. Yeah. I like that. But, I, but I'll say this. It took Jordan eight years to win a championship. It took Jalen Brown seven years to win a championship. Luke has been six. I get it. I mean, he's uh, he's knocking on that door, but uh, you know, it takes time, right? Yes. I believe. I believe as a player and as a team, and you know this. Uh, you experienced it with the Cowboys as yes. a player and as a team. You have to learn how to win, and I don't just mean win a game. I mean win at the highest level, right? Yes. You get to the playoffs and you go, oh, damn, you know, we can't do that. We thought we – I mean, we can beat the Eagles in the regular season doing this. We can't do that in the playoffs, right? Or or these guys get there and they go, oh, man, this is a seven-game series. They're adjusting every time. Oh, we okay, wait, wait, next year we'll be better, right? So he's learning as an individual even as they learn – as a team, and look, hey, the Celtics ain't going anywhere either. All their guys are back next year. Yeah, but also, but I, believe they're, I don't think everybody will be hurt in the East next year. I can depend on the Philadelphia kid to be hurt, but I don't think the Warriors, I mean, not the Warriors, but I don't think the Bucks going to be hurt. Right. I think Atlanta's yeah. going to be better. So yeah, uh, it won't be the cakewalk as it was. Right. Yeah, that's true. Know. That's true. Rad, it's kind of hard for people to understand what I'm saying. It's kind of hard to understand. In, in the NFL, it takes three or four good players with a great player. So you got four or five guys on offense, and you got four or five guys on defense. In the NBA, if you have one superstar great player and you have a, a Robin that is an A-plus Robin or a B-plus Robin, then you can surround yourself with great guys and make runs, a la Denver. And right. you can make a run, a la Denver. That is where the Mavericks are at right now. The difference is, and I continue to tell you, if Luca takes care of his body, it will be the difference. Well, if he okay. don't, watch what I tell you now. Watch what I All tell right. you. I love this. I love this. This is great stuff. I hope Luke is listening. He might be. <laughs> uh, and, and I hope he pays attention because, hey, under any circumstances, it ain't going to hurt him to take care of his body, right? I'm not bro. I'm not saying, no, nah, man, go ahead. Go crazy, Luke. This dude I've did seen. this. He went to the conference finals, bro, and went five games beat up and banged up. Uh, come on now. If he wasn't beat no. up or banged up, come on now, because now he can play defense a little bit better. He can be a better – see, we're not asking Luka to be a star defensive player, but we're asking him to be a helper. Luka couldn't even yeah. help. Yeah. No, Think about was, it now. He was in the blender. You're yeah, right. Yeah, so – No, you're right. The thing that – you know, and, and like I tip it, I don't want you to – oh, Nate is hating. No, 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 no. I don't hate – I love the people of Dallas. Y'all always have been for Nate. So when I see a problem, I just speak on it. I just speak on it. If I see Luca, the first thing I tell Luca, like, hey, man, let's go hang out, man. I'm going over there to the salad shop. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and we ain't finna get a whole bottle of, and see, this, this is what kill you when you go to the salad shop is <laughs> now they say light ranch. 
Now you pour the whole bottle on there. You you should have just yeah. got regular ranch and got your two teaspoonfuls. You see yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> so I tell people in real, don't I, I'm I'm not a hater. I, I never hate great talent. I never because you know what? That is why I will watch the marriage. Yeah. Cause he's yeah. a great talent. That is why I will watch uh Embiid. He's a great talent. But I also be like, what are you doing? And I was and I'll say this right here. Cowboys, what are you doing? You won 10 games, you won 12, you won 12, you won 12. What are you doing? You can't excite us no more. We need a more. NFC championship game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. And I do want you to go back for me because I believe we've, we've maybe buried the lead on this. I never knew it was Charles Haley that got you, uh, got you, got your attention. Yes, if you he will. Did. I'm so tell me about that. Yeah, until Charles got there, I was a um, a uh, what did you call it? Uh, a summer guy that went into you know a guy said a fat farm. I called it my yeah. you know I was one of the first few guys to start having a personal trainer. But since he was yeah. a fat guy, he's always yeah. Nate's gone to the fat farm. He won't be here for six weeks. <laughs> and Coach Warsick never liked it because that's when I we would have our six week period of um of working. But he wanted me. He wanted me there, but I had to go, you know, get out, get, get 70, 80 pounds off in six weeks. So that's where I went is to my guy, Mike Spots. But when Charles Haley came in, he just simply told me, he said, you know, uh, in, in, in very ugly words, he told me, you know, you are a fat son of a mother and we're we going to do something about this. And we started working out. Uh, he said, meet me over here, go home, whatever. Meet me back over here at this time. In the evening after practice, and we started doing the stepper, the uh, the elliptical, uh, walking around the track, and I stayed in shape. And it started. I started making Pro Bowls. I started making All Pro. Uh, he and he worked with me every day. We did it Monday through Monday through Thursday. A light workout on Thursdays because Friday Saturday we was resting. And uh, we worked, man. We lift weights, light weights, but we would do a lot of cardio. Uh, up tempo cardio, slow, uh, long distance cardio, uh, and I stayed in shape, man. I stayed in shape. That's that's, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, and I know Charles is like that. Um, he, uh, but the fact that he didn't just tell you something, yes, but then he did it with you, yes, right? He, yes, uh, he, hey, he he adopted you and yes. your and your and your problem, if you will, if you want to yes. call it that. You yeah, know? It, it was a problem. It was a pro- it, donuts, <laughs> Wendy's, Coors Light. Yeah, uh, running the streets to two in the morning. Yeah, it yeah. was a problem that I enjoyed. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, a you problem had a, I you enjoyed. Had a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, and, and then uh, he changed all of that. Randy White helped me a little bit. You know, uh, just different guys uh, spoke to me and helped me out and. Cause I used to drink seven days a week until I met until Randy White told me, said, Nate, you gotta stop on Thursdays. You gotta stop. Let's just, you know, mm-hmm. you know, if you if you drink one or two beers on Thursday, that's cool. But Friday and Saturday, you don't want to drink anything so you can be clear minded and ready to play on Sunday. You know, so wow. yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I just I, I tell people, uh, and that's after I got older and matured, and that's why that's why I tell people. Uh, we, we, and that's you included, Brad, we make excuses for our superstars because they're a little immature. Yeah. And we make all the excuses, but I I promise you when these stars get older and things don't go their way, uh, they have missed great opportunities. They'll say to themselves and not to you or maybe to their wives, a close one said, man, I wish somebody would have would have got me and shook me. I wish somebody would have just got me and shook me. And uh, I remember Michael Irvin. Uh, y'all remember you remember Rich Dad Rumple? I remember Michael oh, yeah. Irvin going at Rich, you know, because Rich was with him a little bit at at Miami. Miami, yeah. And Mike always wanted to be into TV, and I think Mike went at him because he, he like, man, you you know, y'all should have been prepping us getting us ready for TV, the pronunciation of words, uh, structures of sentences, 
uh, being able to do, you know, and stuff like that, man, just just that you look back and you want to prosper in, but you don't have the basics. Uh, and see, a guy told me yesterday, you mentioned free throws earlier. Let me tell you something, Rat. Let me tell you something. <laughs> now, I'm serious. This is yeah. where people get it so confused. A great coach for the Green Bay Packers once said, fatigue make cowards of us all. Let me tell y'all something. If Luca was in a little bit better shape and his body wasn't beat up, you think Luca would really miss free throws? Come on, man. Talk yeah. to me. Come on now. No, no, I don't. If he's don't. in better shape, now you got better concentration. When I when I got myself in better shape, less offsides, uh, better techniques late in games, better domination late in games, because that's where we need Luca at. Luca can control the pace of a game so great that he can keep the game within three to five points, and now he can take over. Just think if he could do that during the playoffs where he can control the tempo like he did the first two or three games. He controlled the tempo. Luco, only one game where they speeded it up against Oklahoma, where he let Mm -hmm. Kyrie kind of control. And then Mm -hmm. once they got uh, uh, them boys up north where they wanted, the Thunder, um, what is it, Oklahoma? Once he got them where he wanted, now he slowed the game back down. And he was able to take over. And and that, that is what the great players do. They, they, if they're speed guys like Magic, Magic, oh, Showtime, boom, boom, behind the back. You know, Larry Bird was the in between guy. You know, he wasn't slow, and he could run the fast break, but he, 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 he always was trying to set this thing to his tempo. You know, and so each guy, believe it or not, the guy that's closest to Luca, the guy that Luca's closest to, as far as slowing the game down, he ain't as fast and as quick. But Isaiah Thomas, mm-hmm. because he, Isaiah Thomas, controlled the ball 30% of the time, 35% of the time. That's Luca. Luca's a control, just different tempo. He mm-hmm. controls Way the different. ball 35% of the time. Yeah. So he's trying to keep the game where he, want, where he wants it. And that's what hurt Denver when Jokic couldn't control that ball the way he wanted, and they speeded him up. That's the wrong time I've ever seen this kid speed it up. Yeah. The great players have a finding a way of controlling tempo. Yeah. And they did. And the Matt, to your point, the Mavs did through three rounds. Yes, they did. And then they, and then they ran into a team that uh, was able to dictate yes. the temple. Temple yes. basically for, for four of the five. I mean, and that, that one game the Mavs won, they, they had the tempo. Yes, they did. And then so, and the, yeah. the Celtics looked lost. Right. But, but, they found themselves quick. Yeah, right in, so, right in, right in the you know, TD guards. Yeah, right in the guards. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And then, <laughs> then oh, the ghost of Red Auerbach was smoking that big old stogie. Yeah, I Bill promise Russell, you, like, man. Hey, man, yeah, this yeah, is how we yeah. do it. <laughs> this yeah. is how and we I will do say, it. I will say this, and I, I, I agree with you about those most of those Celtics teams. Now, you brought up Bill Russell. They had a superstar then. I mean, I'm not saying they weren't team-oriented, but a Russell – you know, he, he exceeds any team, right? Yeah. The other one that did it in the construct of, of a team, uh, which they're normally, a, a, you know, great at, was Bird. I yes. mean, for Bird, for Bird to be Bird uh, among, and there were some great players, you know, with the McHales and, and all those guys on that team, right? But Dennis Johnson, Larry, yeah. Dennis Johnson, yeah. I mean, but Larry Bird was a superstar, on those teams, but they still played like a team. And that is where we started. And that's kind of where we get to now about, man, the Mavs got beat by a better team. Yes. Yes. Because you're not going to put Tatum ahead of him. You're not going to put Brown no. ahead of him. You're no. not definitely going to put holiday ahead of him or white. So you're right. not going to put these guys ahead of him, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he, like I say, he's a top three player. He was set up. The way he was grinding up the West and doing what he's doing and the commercials and the highlights they were showing at more and more, they were showing more and more of him. And I'm like, all this kid got to do, if he can get through the, through the Celtics, he already the MVP. He can play 65 games. As long as he played the minimum of games, he was going to be the MVP next year. Now people are going to be 
putting Jokic back in there, MB back in there. Uh, they're going to throw Tatum in there because uh, I think Tatum is just a sensational regular season guy. He yet Don't to- forget about Shea. Don't forget about my man Shea. I can't even pronounce the name. That's why I stayed away from it. <laughs> Shake Gilgis Alexander. Yeah. yeah. Don't the guy with all the man. great conquering names. The guy with yeah. all the great conquering yeah. names. Yeah, I promise you. Yeah. Yeah, Edwards the definitely one. don't threw himself in the hat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so anyway, man, that's great. What else do you want to talk about? Anything? Have you, have you followed this Caitlin Clark thing at all? Uh, the, the hate for that girl? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't do I the don't hate. I don't get it, man. No. I don't do the I don't hate. I don't do I the don't hate. I think that I think that I think the WNBA front office dropped the ball. It started mm-hmm. with them. You know, she playing too many games too soon. Them not understanding that she's an offensive threat and that she has to take time to build up her stamina and her skill set so that she may become the shooter she was. In college, it's it, it just going to take a year. Uh, she's yeah. got to learn, her and her handler or her parents or whoever, got to learn that in basketball, unlike a little bit in football, you have to work on your skill set during mm-hmm. the off season. Mm-hmm. And she has to work on her stamina. Uh, they have to understand she's not a defensive player. So don't put her in that position. Make 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 her like like uh, Jason asked uh, Luca to do. Be a great helper, like like Red Auerbach and all the great coaches and 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 guys. They said, "Bird, we know we know you're slow of foot, but we <laughs> but we're gonna t- help you fill these lanes and be a great helper." Uh, yeah. I, I just think from the league uh, to the coaching staff, they did not help her. Uh, I don't know what type of person she is, but the league should have not, you know, have her play 11, 12 games in in, in, five, in 15 days. That's too much. This is she, in college. She didn't play like that. So yeah. don't do her like that. So they have, yeah. they all handle it wrong. Right. And then the players yeah. hating. Yeah. The players in the league hating. I just laugh. I just laugh because. If I'm her, I would take that to heart. I wouldn't hold it against him, but I would take it to heart and say, you know, I'll come back a better player. And I think yeah. she will. I do I too. Think and she, you know uh, what? Yeah. It's interesting. What it reminds me of is all them golfers hating on Tiger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Somebody comes in who's great and everybody wants to hate on him. And, and then next thing you know, it's not even hate. It's fear. Yeah. It's fear. Right? Because after they hated on Tiger – they feared him for yeah. years. Like yeah. he would just cause other golfers that were great to quake in their shoes. Yeah, and, spend um, on, it, spend on the final day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what made me laugh is it, people say you got Tiger or the field, and it wasn't really that. You know what it really was? It was Tiger versus who was in his group on that last day. Yeah, because. The first two rounds, everybody's playing their best. And right. whoever normally playing with Tiger is playing their best. And so his group and his three or four guys that's in his group and his cluster going into the last, the back eight or back nine or however they do golf. Back nine. Yeah. They, <laughs> and that, that's when the that pressure hit. All of a sudden, it's this long putt or this, you know, you need a par four. You know, you don't swung three and you're 20 feet out. And all of a sudden, Tiger's sitting over there looking at you. <laughs> Got that eagle eye on you. He's a predator. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you blow it. Swoop in. Yeah. You blow it. Yeah. yeah. You blow it. I know. And he just goes up and putt because there ain't no pressure on him. It's like, I'm Tiger. You, 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 you sweating. And so that's, that's what she did. She brought fear. And so girls that were more talented than her, uh, got a little bit of seasoning to them and sitting them embracing this and saying, you know what? I'm going to take advantage of it this year. I ain't got to talk. I'm going to let my scoring, my defense, or whatever it is, shine. Because the league, the light is on you now. So people are noticing you yeah. because of her. Don't hate her, you know. Uh, and so uh, I, I would just... 
if I'm her, I mean, I'm afraid for her because she helped the league and uh, the league didn't embrace her. And that's from the top, from the commissioner on down to the coaching staff. They did not help her. Well, and you know why the commissioner uh, and them didn't help her? The almighty dollar, right? You can almost always trace it back to that yeah. because they had to play her because yeah. she's selling out every arena. Right. These arenas that have never sold out are selling out every game. And I, I, I will say this, and I don't know where you stand on this. We hadn't talked about it like we sometimes right. do on these topics off air. But anyway, uh, I applaud the U.S. Olympic Committee who who know more about the women's game than I do right. and said, Doug, she's not one of the best. I mean, right. she's probably going to be, but she's not one of the best. And everybody's like, you should put her on there just so you could get that, you know, exposure for women's basketball. Stop it. We're going over there to try and win a gold medal. But didn't didn't she ask not to be put on there too? Didn't she request No, it? I don't I don't think so. My intel says she was saying, Oh man, I would love to win a gold medal for my my right. country. Which, again, I think she'll yeah. have an opportunity to. It's four years, but she'll still be playing. The thing, but, uh, the, but I think they were smart. She's, I don't, you know, there's a lot of really great players in the WNBA. You know, and even if she don't need this, man, she don't need to be nah. in a locker room with a bunch of people looking at you saying, how did you get here? Yeah. Uh, you know, if I'm her, I'm like, you know what? There's more guys and girls worthy, more worthy than me to be here. I, 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 I'll learn from this. And, I, and I'm just praying that she has a strong enough group with her to say, OK, I'm going to learn from this. And uh, and I'm going to find my niche, which is shooting. And I'm going to improve that in the other areas where I'm weak at. I'm going to improve that by 25, 30 percent. But my shooting is going to be on par. And uh, and they find a coaching staff, or the uh, present coaching staff, find out what her strength is besides shooting, and, and go towards that, and put her in a better position to win, mm -hmm. to be successful. That's your job here's as what, a coach. Here's yes, and here's what I worry about with with kids, you know, like her today. I hope they're um, self reflective enough to recognize that what you just said that yeah. wow i need to improve because the right. problem and this look this is for this falls on us parents uh, uh, our generation of parents always told our kids they were so great <laughs> that nowadays these kids all want to be like no i'm the greatest i'm the greatest i've been told i'm the greatest and then a lot of coaches will tell them and of course you knew this i mean you were a good player you know growing right. up wherever you played you know and you get you get treated very well and then all of a sudden you're oh, i'm the greatest and and something needs to humble you now in caitlin's case i'm sure some of these games have humbled her right, right. and some of the, right. the performances but but you need that you need that dose of humble pie and realize wow Everybody in the NFL is really good. You know, well, everybody in the WNBA is really good. The, the, the thing, the thing that's, the thing that's so sad, and I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic about these kids I'm about to mention. But if six, if this first six picks, and they were all three of them were Frenchmen, yeah. If I'm, the, if I'm, if I'm the USA, I'm like, wow. Yeah. If that ain't humbling. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what? Let me stop right now. And I'm going to get off the air. Because if I got to hear another so-called expert tell me about this is a weak draft. How can, how do you know? Right. Three years from now, what if four or five of these guys, if it's going to happen, are stars? Are, are, some, are, are, are Drew Holidays of the world? Are, are whites of the world? Are, what, that bothers me, man. Yeah. What gives you the right to tell a young 18, 17, 18, 19 year old? We shouldn't be getting drafted until they twenty twenty one, right? That 
it's a weak draft. Yeah. Who, who give these guys this authority, yeah. man? Yeah. These guys are teenagers, man. You have no idea what they're going to become. It depends on, uh, obviously, a lot of their measurables. But you know as well as I do, it depends a lot more on what's in here. And development. And the, and the, yes. And development. Right. That's right. Yeah. Come on, it. man. How good is that 19U uh, French team? Good yeah. gosh. I mean, they, they must have had five kids off of that team got drafted in the first round. And, and, and you're going to say these. I, I, I'm like, Edwards class, they, was, they say it was a weak class. What is Edwards doing? Yeah, how's he doing? Come on, yeah. man. Yeah, he's a top five player. And what gets me, don't tell me, oh, the reason we said that is because, you know, uh, three or four guys, you know, uh, didn't show up or didn't didn't turn out to be good. Let me let me tell you something. Michael Jordan had a guy, I can't think of this big guy that was drafted ahead of him. And oh yeah, it was uh, uh no uh, I'm, it's supposed I'm to been so play. good and so great. Don't Barry Carroll. Yeah, oh the I, I tell people this right here. It don't take but one to excite the league. So out of all the people that got drafted, this is what the NBA offers us. It can be a hundred guys drafted. We need one and a half to show up. Yeah. Luca, remember they switched with Atlanta? And Atlanta yep. got young. Yeah. Okay. Luca is showing out. Young is still good. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these guys in the draft uh, are just okay. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about. That, in yeah. the NBA, in the NFL, it has to be more players to show up. Yeah. Because it's a bigger team. Right. Major League Baseball, I don't worry about, about them because they have like 25 drafts. <laughs> 25 rounds, and then they, they And do. then they take 10 years to develop their kids. So I don't yeah, worry about it. The, the, well, the, the NBA, the Major League Baseball got it down. Yeah, I was going to say, in some ways, yeah. they are the only ones that have it right. Yeah, they have it right. It's but time to grow. You, Luca is, Luca is Luca because he played with grown men. Yes, sir. You know, uh, LeBron was LeBron because he was a grown man. Yes, okay? sir. Okay. Michael Jordan no, I, had college to develop yeah. him with a great coach. So yeah. either way, you have to be developed. Yes. It's only and one we, magic that come in the right. league and just win an NBA championship but right off the rip. That's because yeah. look at his reporting cast. Come yeah, on, man. That's great, great. Yeah. I, no, you and, know and, what? Uh, to that point, I, you know, and I quote Jimmy all the time. I'll quote these great coaches that I've had the privilege and the honor of being around. And, and the late, great Bo Beckler from Michigan, when I was first in the business, man, I got to know Bo. And he, um, I'd ask him, how was your draft this year, Bo? Oh, hell, I don't know. Ask me in four years. Right? Yes. You don't know what these kids are going to do. You don't know. A weak draft. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Come on, don't do that. Don't do that to these kids. Yeah. But anyway. I hope Spencer do a great job because we talked longer than we needed to. Uh, I like your background, and we was going to show a little Dallas Cowboys 27, but uh, our great producer, Spencer, who's not good yeah, for anything else percent. but telling us what we can't do. What we can't yeah. do. Yeah, yeah he nice, tells us yeah. what we can't do. You know, that's why he crying about the Mavericks. <laughs> oh, I got on green. <laughs> I got on green. <laughs> I hope that don't cost us nothing, Spencer, to wag green. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really something green. You're all right. But, all uh, right, my brother. Spencer, do a great job of chopping this up because we went a little long today. I figured Rad needed somebody to talk to. He'd been through a few things, so I know he wanted yeah, to talk we say, to you. We said we, we said we were going to have a conversation, and I will say this. <laughs> I did not have I did not have on my bingo card that we would talk golf on, let me tell you something today, but we even got a little golf in. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it's all about the great players. Uh, who is the greatest player of your era? The greatest player of my era, and I barely missed it, was Muhammad Ali. And I barely missed him. He was the, one of the greatest yeah. athletes ever to play the game. I think he could have been a great linebacker, the first Lawrence Taylor if he'd have played football. I think he could have been a nice uh, power forward or off guard if he'd have played basketball. Yeah, I think a guy you've got to put in that category, and you were a contemporary of his, is Bo Jackson. Ooh! You put – oh, that was sweet. 
Oh, huh? Red, that huh? was sweet. Oh, that I'm was sweet. Saying, oh, you're the Deion Sanders. Yeah. Yeah, Deion's close, too. Yeah, Deion man. probably, Deion, as great as he is and everything else, he probably didn't have like the power of an Ali or yeah. uh, Bo Jackson. Yeah. Right? That's the only thing he would have yeah. been lacking that those guys have, man. That Bo Jackson. I can't. That was a, it was a privilege to cover that, man. Yeah. And a nice guy, too. Was it Jim Thorpe? Yeah, and of course he's way ahead I, I, of us. I, I, I read up on him, man. I did too, he was man. Special. I read his books when and, I was and, little. And, yeah, and, and sports did not do him any no. favors. They downplayed no. everything he did. Uh, yeah, by this because amateur he was Native status. American. They, yeah, they, yeah, mm-hmm. they, 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 they heard him, man. Jim Thorpe, man, and you, you'd see pictures. I see pictures still of like some of the shoes and stuff he yeah. ran in. Wow. Like he's running in a man's dress shoe. <laughs> right, man. You know, somebody it's... stole his damn shoes. They give him a pair of man's dress shoes, and he ran and won the race by, you know, 100 yards in a men's dress shoes. Jim Dude Thorpe. was unbelievable. You know, I look at Jim Thorpe. I look at Muhammad Ali. Uh, I look at Bo Jack. I... Jesse, you know, I, you know I, 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 I. But then I look at some of my basketball players. Just think how great. Uh, the guy that just passed away. Uh, the, the, Bill Russell? No, no, no. He was the GM. Uh, he oh, did Jerry logo. West. Jerry West. Yeah, Come Jerry on, West. Man. Yeah. If he was on winning teams, wow. I mean, what he did yeah, in he was college. Unbelievable. And see, I tell people, go back and read and really look at some of these players. Like, like Johnny Unitas. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, that was my favorite quarterback growing up now. I I, I took the time to just look at some of his highlights and some of his games and some of the documentaries, and I don't look at everybody. It just that night, something caught my eyes a lot, a lot of years ago, and people were like, who is your favorite quarterback, Johnny Unitas? Because, believe it or not, back then, it was one-on-one coverage. Yeah. One no zone, find the open hole. You had to make it happen while somebody holding you, boning you in your head. You had to find the open. And so the 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 this that is the equalizer. So it'd be oh they faster now. These this uh back then when I could walk up to you and if I can get my hands on you, you had to get off the line of scrimmage. If I can mm-hmm. get my hands, I could hold you. As long as I stayed in front of you, I could hold you. That was the equalizer back then. So when a guy did break free, that quarterback had to be accurate. He had to be putting it on it, bro. Yeah. Come on now. Talk to yeah. me, Rad. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> Johnny, hey, you, just, baby. We, Johnny, we you. Just, yeah, dang right. <laughs> You're dang right. Number 19, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, Baltimore uh, Colts. So, yes, sir. Uh, so we just made Spencer's job harder, but yeah. it's cool, man. It's cool. We can just go down memory lane. Yeah. Hey, hey, great show, Nate. Thanks. Fun talking with Thank you as you, always. Man. We'll do it Take again care soon, of your my family, brother. Bro. Take care Thank of your you. family. God bless you, brother. Thank you, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.